John chapter 6, if you've got a Bible and want to turn over there, we'll read a few verses, we'll camp out there just for a, a few minutes. For those of you that are trying to find a clock, just hang on, we're going to get going fast here and get everybody to Bible class in just a minute. But I've got to ask you a question that you've got to think about for the next five minutes, and that is, are you a follower of Jesus? We'll stop and think about that just for a minute. Are you a follower of Jesus? We read a book earlier this year in my Sunday school class called Not a Fan. Let me share something with you from that book. Kyle Eidelman in that book writes, The biggest threat to the church today is fans who call themselves Christians but aren't actually interested in following Christ. They want to be close enough to Jesus to get all the benefits, but not so close that it requires anything from them. John chapter 6 says this. Let's go to verse 1. After this, you, you love this story. It's a famous story. Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following. Can you imagine all the miracles and things that Jesus did, the people that he healed? Can you imagine the people that would follow him because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick? Verse 3, Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. Verse 5, Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all of these people? I like Matthew's account in, in chapter 14, verse 16. Jesus says, you give them something to eat. I, I like that. But he was testing Philip here in John 6, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we work for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Well, then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke to him and said, there's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is that with this huge crowd? Jesus tells everybody to sit down, so they all sit down on the grassy slopes. The men, the men alone numbered about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, he gave thanks to God and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish. They all ate as much as they wanted after everyone was full. It's like a buffet. Are you with me? It is a buffet. They're full. Everybody's full. Jesus says, now go gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. They pick up 12 baskets with scraps left by people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, surely he's the prophet we've been expecting. See, after this miracle is performed, the, the people decide to camp out and spend the night. Are you with me? Jesus wakes up. I mean, before they can wake up, Jesus goes over on the other side of the lake. He needed some peace, some rest. So the buffet has been shut down. Because Jesus has gone to the other side. Well, they follow him. They follow him over to the other side. And we'll read on here in John together today, verse 26. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. Not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you, for the God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. So here's the question, was it Jesus they really wanted or what he could do for them? And so maybe we could think about today. Look what Jesus says in verse 35 of John 6. Jesus replies, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So at this point, for this large group of people, Jesus is the only thing on the menu. Are you picturing it? You come into your favorite restaurant, you're used to the 35-foot long buffet, and you walk in, there's just one pan of the same thing. That's what they've got. Jesus is the only thing on the menu. So what's going to happen? Look in verse 66. Sadly, what happens here is what sometimes happens to us. Verse 66 of John 6. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. And let me give you this key item, this key point today. If you don't remember anything else, maybe you'll remember this. It wasn't the size of the crowd Jesus cared about. It was their level of commitment. Think about this for a minute. Because let me tell you this. Sometimes my level of commitment is not what it needs to be because I find myself beginning to focus on the wrong thing. 
Are you with me? Or maybe, maybe I'm scared to fully turn my life over and to be a true follower of Jesus. Now, let me just tell you this from the person who comes from the planning aspect of taking 88 people out of the country, sometimes I would allow myself to lose the focus of why we were going in the first place. Okay? Now, one month ago, one month ago today, we had our John 6 moment. One month ago today, God looked around to some of us and said, you feed them. Okay? Let me share a story with you. Every day, as Andrew mentioned, at the soccer camp, when it was over from something that happened last year, we decided we needed to feed those children. We felt like they were going home hungry. So every day, we would, with the Villa Church, feed. It was about 240 children. We'd have them set on the bleachers. They were about as long as this gym, old concrete bleachers with graffiti spray painted all over them. And while uh, the ladies would be setting up the tents and the food, we would sing with the kids that last day, July the 12th. Lunch was just a little late arriving, no fault of our ladies or their ladies, it was just the way that it timed out, and we had sung all of the songs we knew. All right, and let me tell you how bad it got, Al. I led a song. <laughs> I, I got a bullhorn and I was just singing all I could do because in my mind, I'm thinking, here's the crowd of people. They're getting restless. Lunch is not here. What are we going to do? It was John 6. It was Matthew 14. What are we going to do? And just like the small boy who shows up with the sack lunch, we had Jackson McCreelis. Jackson McCreelis, who walks up to Randy Hargan in the midst of uh, Randy and, and Josh Davis and Ryan House and, and me. We're trying, we're singing, we're coming, we're like, what, what, I'm try, thinking of some Billy Joel songs or something that I can try to get pe people to sing here with me to kill some time. Jackson says, why don't we ask them if they want to get baptized? Yeah. See, the leaders were worried about the time, the line, the crowd, the order, what's next? And Jesus said, you give them something to eat. Are you with me? And he wasn't talking about sandwiches. And so we call out to the crowd and we say, anybody want to come down and pray? Would anybody just like to come down and pray? And you know what? It didn't seem to be so disorganized. It didn't seem to be so chaotic. People seemed to get calm. And folks begin to come out of the bleachers. And I think we may have some pictures of that. I hope we do that we can flip around, and you can just flip them at your discretion, Roger. Our adults, and more importantly, our teens, began to pray with these young men and young women. And they came, and they came, and they continued to pour out of those bleachers. And it wasn't because we planned anything. It wasn't because we organized some big awesome deal. We just said, you want to pray with somebody. And guess what? Five more people decided to be baptized that last day because of what you see right here on the screen. So here's what we got to get in here because next thing you know, it's going to be time for second service. It's time to define the relationship. Are you ready? Remember when you were dating? Remember when that happened? Baxter, you're laughing. Don't do that. Rita's right there beside you. There came a point when your significant other and you, you were looking at each other, and you were like, where's this going? And for some folks, that's a scary moment. Where's this going? It's even more unawkward or uncomfortable when maybe the two of you don't see eye to eye on where the definition of the relationship is. So here's where we're going to end today, is you're going to picture yourself at your favorite coffee shop, your favorite snack shop, or wherever you go just to chill out and read a magazine and you've got your coffee, and you make your way to the back, and just imagine yourself finding that booth in the back corner, and it's peaceful, and you're going to have five minutes. Ah, oh, sitting down. It's quiet. And you look up, and here comes Jesus walking in. He walks into the restaurant, to the coffee shop, and he comes back to the table, and he sits down right across from you. And if you're me, I'll start making probably uncomfortable, crazy jokes about the weather 
or when football season is going to start or something because I'm thinking, I don't know what to say. Did, did I bless? Did I say a prayer for this food before I ate it? Because now Jesus is sitting right across from me. And after I make those jokes, he probably looks at me like he used to look at Peter, give him some of those looks like, man, Mark's crazy. And he's going to look across the table at you. Are you ready? Because he's going to do something right now. He's sitting across and he gazes at you and he gets serious and he says this, it's time for us to define our relationship. He's going to want to know how you feel about him. He's going to want to know, is your relationship with him exclusive? He's going to define that relationship. He's going to want to know what exactly is your level of commitment. And you know what? He's not going to sugarcoat it. He's not going to dress it up. He's going to tell you exactly what it means to follow him. And so as you sit there in that coffee shop listening to this unedited version of what it means to be a follower of Jesus, I wonder now if our answer to the question that we started out with might be different. Are you a follower of Jesus? Because I can tell you this, sometimes again, I get distracted. I lose focus. And I bet you there's somebody here today that may get distracted, that may lose their focus, that may be wanting to get back on that path of becoming a follower of Jesus. Or maybe you've been thinking about being like the two folks in Estonia that John mentioned, or the 13 that we mentioned from Antigua earlier today, and you've been thinking about putting Christ on in baptism. If there's anything anybody here could help you do today to encourage you to get focused, to be a follower of Jesus, We'd ask you to come while we stand and sing.